Spend two minutes looking at App Store reviews of Procreate Dreams and you'll come away so confused. Very few people seem to love the app, and there's a lot of folks straight up offended by it. I think a lot of this, but not all by any means, is down to expectation. Now first, Procreate, the drawing app, not Procreate Dreams, is generally beloved. I paid for it once years ago, and the team has updated it relentlessly ever since. And now it's become pretty much my favorite drawing app, and I've used a lot of drawing apps. It does such a wonderful job of getting out of your way and letting you just draw. You know, it doesn't emulate traditional brushes with the same realism as Corel Painter, for example, but I can achieve pretty much any look I want within Procreate. It also includes a fairly rudimentary frame-by-frame -frame animation feature, so when their developers announced they were releasing a dedicated animation app, my imagination went wild. Which brings me to the second reason everyone's expectations were so high. The announcement. In September 2023, the Procreate team announced Procreate Dreams in a sort of old-school Apple-style keynote. James Kuda, Procreate CEO, got up on stage with the words, It's time behind him in a giant font, and proceeded to present the new app's features over the next 30 minutes. They even produced their own Apple-style commercial, just like the slick product videos Johnny Ive used to narrate. You know, it sounds silly, but to me, the pitch was actually quite compelling. You see, I've used a couple of industry standard 2D animation tools, TV Paint and Toon Boom or Harmony. These are highly capable applications. You can rig your characters, color across frames using templating, establish camera movements, incorporate 3D backgrounds, you know, the list goes on and on. But that complexity pushed the joy of frame-by-frame -frame animation into some distant and forgotten corner. The feel of drawing and seeing your images come to life just wasn't fun, and I couldn't help but imagine a streamlined and simplified process on my iPad. After testing some existing animation apps on the iPad, which I won't name here, I actually started developing my own app because I saw nothing came close to achieving the elegant simplicity I'd envisioned. I wanted Procreate, but for animation. Then, when Procreate announced their animation app, it was one of those rare moments in technology when I felt like a development team had built the exact thing that I wanted. And after the announcement, I counted down the days until Dreams would be released on November 22nd. I even pre-ordered the app, something I almost never do for any product. In fact, I can't think of another time I've actually pre-ordered something. The day finally came. I downloaded it immediately. I sat down, opened the app, and was super confused. I read the limited online documentation, perused the pre-loaded sample animations, and watched YouTube videos of people who got early access to the app, and just played around. It was so different from the animation workflow with which I was familiar that I got really frustrated. There were so many gestures and ways of manipulating the timeline that I felt everything I wanted to do required six or seven steps. But I've used a lot of unfamiliar software over the years to the point where I understand this frustration is natural and will fade over time. So I pushed myself to keep going, and boy am I glad that I did. Now, and I know lots of you will disagree with me, but I love Procreate Dreams, even though it's missing some fairly unforgivable features for a version 1.0 release of an animation app. And I'm suspicious that those features might never come. And more on that later. And despite its promise of being a pro-level tool, you know, the ceiling on what you can achieve is lower than an actual professional tool like Toon Boom. Before I get into that, let's start with something positive. As it turns out, all those annoying gestures are, for the most part, great once you learn them. The iPad combines touch and pencil support in a way that the Mac just doesn't, even when using a Wacom display. Procreate Dreams lets you disable touch for drawing, allowing you to manipulate the interface with your fingers without worrying about accidentally thumbing in an extra line as you zoom in, for example. Only your Apple Pencil will create lines. Navigating the timeline is really quite natural once you get the hang of things. Uh, you know, I also love swiping down for full screen drawing experience, though I agree with other users at the Flipbook, which allows you to still navigate the timeline in drawing mode. You could be less intrusive 
or more helpful, you know, either direction. When you're in this mode, you get to draw much like you can draw in Procreate with the same brushes and similar interface. And there's a slightly different feel though, even while using the exact same brush. I like to do rough sketching with the HB Pencil, and when I switch back and forth between the two apps, I notice a subtle difference. The developers engineered a new drawing engine for Dreams to allow all the animation stuff they'd envisioned, like the expanded canvas size, you know, frames and layers exceeding Procreate's limits, and maintaining performance with the non-destructive effects you can add atop your drawings. However, this new engine feels off. And I racked my brain with how to describe the difference to make it make sense in this video, but in the end, I can only say that it doesn't feel as natural, which is a really vague description, you know, I know. The difference is enough that I would never attempt backgrounds or other complex illustrations within Dreams. I still make those in Procreate and drag them over, which incidentally is a great benefit of the compatibility between the two apps. There is one oddity in Dreams that I can identify though, and it may be enough to make you steer clear of the app altogether. And that's line consistency. You know, this isn't a vector-based app, so you're never gonna have mathematically calculated lines that maintain their size and shape, no matter your zoom level. And I get that, and that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is that you can use the exact same brush at different zoom levels in the canvas, and you wind up with completely different lines. But let me show you normal behavior, something that's consistent across every drawing app I've ever used until Dreams. I take my HB pencil and make a line. Then I draw the same line and again, another line. All three of these lines are identical because I haven't changed the brush settings. All I've done is zoomed in on the canvas. Like if I draw a line on a real sheet of paper, it's not gonna change no matter how close I bring my eyeballs to it. It's still the same line. But in Dreams, the zoom level of the canvas inexplicably affects the line. Here's the same experiment in Dreams. Line one, two, and three. The brush is making a different stroke on the canvas depending upon how zoomed in I am. In my mind, this is not acceptable behavior. And unless I'm missing something obvious, I can't imagine anyone would want this to happen. And when I set a brush, I expect it to behave the same way no matter how close I am to the canvas. This is especially important in animation because your characters will look crazy if the line thickness, density, and overall look changes from frame to frame, or even within a single frame, depending upon how zoomed in you were while drawing the image. I have to imagine that this is a side effect of the new drawing engine, something they still haven't solved over a year since version one's release. Since we're on the topic of things that might make you avoid dreams, I'll add one more to the list. A lack of selection and transform tools. This is one of my biggest complaints, but it's something the team has said is an act of development. And still, it's concerning that we've gone over a year without it, which makes me think something about their new drawing engine is making it more difficult to add than they'd anticipated. Their lack of communication on this matter in their forum is also concerning and leads me to wonder whether they've given up on it. But let's talk about why the tool is important. Let's say I'm drawing a figure in regular old Procreate. I accidentally make the head too small compared to the body. No big deal, I just grab my lasso tool, select the head and make it bigger. There's no way to do this in Dreams. Like, you literally can't select and transform part of any drawing. This is an egregious missing feature in an animation program because it means that if you make a mistake while sketching, you have to basically redraw the whole thing or do something really funky, like duplicate the frame and erase part of the image. All you can do right now is transform the entire layer and destructive changes like I just outlined are impossible. It's actually a lot like traditional animation on translucent paper where sometimes you have to redraw the same sketch many times for the desired effect, but I do expect some improvement over old school animation from a digital app. For now, continuing to use Procreate in conjunction with Dreams is a must. And that gets back to the question of expectation. Now, the way the Procreate team presented Dreams was 
Procreate, but for animation. And this made me think we'd have all the tools from Procreate, especially when they emphasize the two apps' similarities. This isn't the case at all, at least not yet. We can't even do things like flatten layers, for example, and until very recently, Apple Pencil support wasn't the same with the absence of the hover feature and the missing brush cursor being sorely felt. These missing features were even weirder, considering the Procreate team had a prominent spot in an Apple event discussing the Apple Pencil Pro, which itself only got support a couple of months after the event. And I've seen some people saying that they're annoyed that Dreams would add these less necessary features before more important updates, though considering Apple featured Procreate in their presentation, I can see why they'd want to first cater to Apple before their users. Color filling also took a big step back from Procreate. It seems slower somehow, and particularly on older iPads, sometimes colors don't even fill a closed shape until you take another action after filling. Like, try to erase something. But more crucially, you can only continue filling shapes by dragging the color over and over and over. This is an insane problem for an animation app. If you have a 10 second animation with 10 shapes to fill within each frame, even at 12 frames per second, you have to drag your colors 1,200 times. Double or triple that if you add a shadow layer. And my carpal tunnel syndrome is really unhappy with this repetitive process. Dreams really needs a way to continue filling like Procreate or most any other drawing app. Oh, and the fill itself often leaves a little gap between the fill color and the line, no matter how you set the fill threshold. And yet, despite all these downfalls, there is enough here to accomplish a lot and enjoy the experience. Like I said, you're gonna hit a ceiling that an app like Toon Boom just doesn't have. But the benefits outweigh the limitations, at least for me, in some cases. And most importantly, the core flow is solid. And flow is central to a lot of creative endeavors, just like writing when I need a very specific combination of factors to keep me focused on the words. And animation also demands a certain process to get me locked into that flow state, where I can just blast through frame after frame. With Dreams, there's a direct connection between my actions and what I'm producing. Unlike a lot of modern animation tools in which I feel farther and farther removed from the original animation techniques of drawing on paper. And cluttered interface elements that would look at home in the late 90s just get in the way, while Dream's simplified interface, though unintuitive at first, becomes ingrained once you're used to it. Altogether, Dreams presents the best fusion of offering the benefits of digital technology without losing the feel of traditional animation. I mean that both in terms of how it feels to create an animation, but also what you wind up with in the end. Adding in too many 3D backgrounds, crazy camera movements, particle effects, and other modern wizardry offered by Toon Boom can wind up making your animation feel more computer generated than hand drawn. I'm not saying this is a bad thing in general because there are plenty of artistically spectacular CGI heavy animations. It's just not the look I enjoy or what I'm trying to produce. I'm aiming for something that's perhaps a bit more of a throwback to the cartoons I enjoyed growing up, but to each their own. And speaking of camera movements, unlike setting up camera movements in something like Toon Boom, everything in Dreams is just like direct. If you want a camera movement, you just move the drawing using the built-in motion tool. Through direct manipulation like this, I found that I've actually learned and developed a much more intuitive understanding of motion than I was able to get when relying upon tools that figured things out for me. And that's part of what I like about animation in the first place, the puzzle solving aspect. Each time I think of a new shot I wanna make, I have to figure out how to achieve this using just a series of two-dimensional images. Successfully executing a complex movement is one of the most satisfying feelings I've enjoyed in art, you know, full stop. And I get that this sort of experience isn't for everyone. If you just wanna rig up some vector-based 2D characters to generate motion through keyframes, you'll definitely wanna check out something like Toon Boom. Or, and I hate to say it, resort to some of the AI wizardry that's going on now, which, you know, that's a whole separate topic. You know, or if you really rely on 3D backgrounds like a lot of hybrid animations do, 
you'll also want to look elsewhere. But if you want to achieve that classic look, the kind from you know old Disney movies or the 90s cartoons that I grew up loving, you could definitely get there with Dreams. Or at least you will be able to once they add in some desperately needed features. Here's the thing. I was ready to say that I'm not worried about whether or not these features are coming. The Procreate team has an industry-leading record of updating their app. You know, besides, it's not like you're paying a subscription. My Adobe suite cost me like 70 plus dollars a month. I paid 20 bucks or something for Procreate years ago, and I'm still getting free updates. At the same time, I'm not willing to give Dreams a pass. Having worked a ton in digital product development, including app development, I think there's a debate over whether Dreams is a 1.0 release or really just like a beta. At launch, there were enough bugs that I might even label it like an alpha potentially. There are certain features like the lasso tool that I would consider essential for a digital animation app. And going on more than a year post release without it is kind of nuts and more than a little concerning. And at this point, I'd probably recommend waiting a bit longer before diving in to see whether any major updates come. For a long time, there was complete radio silence on the update progress. You know, recently though, the Procreate team has begun sharing updates on TikTok, you know, which is encouraging. If and when they release their 1.1 update, which includes a ton of requested features, I will post a follow-up video. Overall, my guess is the developers' ambition bit them a bit. There is a lot of functionality I haven't even touched on in this review, like adding audio and exporting and applying non-destructive effects. I certainly believe they spent a ton of time on Dreams' development. There's a lot here, and I love some of it. Overall, I'm very grateful to the Procreate team that this app exists, but I'm also worried that their development challenges for the future features are massive, and I've devoted a lot of time to working in Dreams, animating my own TV show pilot based on one of my novels, which I'll talk about later. Though, here's a little sneak peek. Mr. Reynolds made you swear not to go looking for that tree. So you finally believe it's real? No. Sometimes survival demands only obedience, not comprehension. You're not one of them, are you? What was your plan, little girl? Get ready to run. Please, Charlie, you have to come. Your friend is gone. Charlie isn't gone. He, he can't be. Keep your secrets, brother. It matters not. Erase that foolish notion from your mind, because believe me, Mogan sacrificed a lot to gain his power. Suffering pain you'd be wise to fear. Anyway, let me know what you think. Do you use Dreams? If not, does this review make you more excited to try it out or just like afraid? If you enjoyed this video, you know, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you again soon.